A tip of the hat to Stu Stack and Mike Kielty. To miners and their families the world over. And to songwriter Jimmy Dean. This is an instructional video. A little bit about lighting, sound recording, videography, and in the end, of course, editing. And it's a commentary about storytelling, about the nature of stories. And in telling this story, we're doing a few little things just to help us set the mood, create a little bit of a graphic look. Now, John Myers Myers, he researched the splintered pieces of the first-hand witnesses and the people that they spoke to. And he was able to construct the saga of Hugh Glass. Now, Glass may have been one of the most singular heroes in all of American folklore. The story that he told was uh, turned into a film called The Revenant. You may be familiar with that. I think one of the most important things for me that he brought to the storytelling was his commentaries on the nature of truth, fiction, legend, mythology. I think that that was some of the best stuff that uh, I've ever read on the nature of truth and stories. But coal miners, fishermen, timbermen, sailors, moonshiners, long haul truckers, they all share their stories. And there's usually something in these stories that everyone can hear in humor or in tragedy. Something they can feel the deeper truths of in their own lives. Something that has meaning for them, for you, in the story that's told. There's a line from a book by John Straley called The Woman Who Married a Bear that stuck with me. The quote is, most old stories don't have anything to do with the facts. They're the box the facts came in. Now, I don't know the origins of this story. There's probably more than one. I don't think that really matters. There should be something in it for you. And it goes something like this. Well, I don't know what I can tell you about it. Every morning at the mine, you'd see him arrive. He stood six foot six, weighed 245, kind of broad at the shoulder, narrow at the hip. Everybody knew you didn't give no lip to Big John. Big bad John. Nobody seemed to know where John called home. He just drifted into town, stayed all alone. He didn't say much, kind of quiet, shy. And if you spoke at all, you just said hi to Big John.
Now, some folks said he'd come from New Orleans, where he'd gotten a fight over a Cajun queen and a crashing blow from a huge right hand sent Louisiana fella to the promised land. Hmm. Well, there came a day at the bottom of the mine when that timber cracked, men started crying. Miners were praying, hearts beat fast. Everybody thought they'd breathe at last, except John. In the gas and the smoke of that man-made hell, walked a giant of a man the miners knew well. He grabbed that sag and timber, gave out with a groan. Like a giant oak tree, he stood there alone. And then, with all his strength, he gave a mighty shove. And a miner yelled out, there's a light up above. Twenty men scrambled from a would-be grave. Now there's just one left down there to save. Big John. So, with jacks and timbers, they started back down. And came that rumble way down on the ground. The smoke and gas belched out of that mine. Everybody knew it was the end of the line for Big John. Well, they never reopened that worthless pit. But they placed a marble stand in front of it. And these few words were written on that stand. At the bottom of this mine lies a big, big man. Big John. Big Bad John.